You know how it was for people like us growing up. There's this guy I asked. This is a neighbor. I was uh, in Muldrow, living in this tiny ass Dean Drezzle's fucking trailer and just feeling claustrophobic and just... Anyways, I reached out to this neighbor because I had to do a homework assignment and uh, they seemed nice enough and I was working on, I want to say my truck and I needed some tool, a hex tool, like a, you know, not a triangle or a uh, pentagon, but a hexagon. And usually like Allen wrenches, I mean, they'll come in like a whole set, the whole thing. And so I went over to my neighbor's house and I asked him, hey, do you have any hex tools? And he just made it seem like it was the dumbest, stupidest question he's ever heard. I don't have no hex tools. Hex tools? Like what the hell is a hex tool? I remember my cousin... When we were younger, you know, we were driving through Florence and there was Malcolm X was playing at the theater. And she's like, Malcolm X. And it did look good in the theater. Malcolm X theater. Like, what the heck? That did look cool. I, you know, brought it up to her many years later. And she goes, what are you talking about? (laughs) You're acting over the fucking top and stupid and crazy because... I like that you said that you liked Malcolm. I like that, but you're what a racist piece of shit now. And you thought I was like what saying? Remember that one time you wasn't a racist piece of shit? No, no, I like that. I like that thing, but it was like hex tool. What are you talking about? It was like she's trying to make it seem like I was crazy. What are you talking about? You are making things up. They, those are lies. <laughs> No, we were like in a van going to fucking All Saints, Union, Northern Kentucky, Florence. They used to have a marquee right there, Florence, driving by, Malcolm X. Oh my God, Malcolm X. And then when she said it, one of the older brothers was like, Mary, like, how dare you like Malcolm X? So, you know, her first initial position was correct. But, um, yeah, uh, a hex tool. What are you talking about? I'm just, why are people such fucking dicks? If you're not ready for that shit, that could really get to you. Hex tool. Are you a dumb motherfucker? Are you stupid or you're just, you're being a piece of shit because you don't want me talking to you no more or something? What, what is it? You you feel threatened by me? I don't, what are you talking about? Oh, you're racist now. Oh, you're a fucking racist now. So now you're going to try to make it seem like some pleasant memory that I had was, okay. There's these two kittens I had found. Gent. Gallatin County, on the farm I grew up on, I found these two kittens, and they were under the house, it was the the barn cat that they let run around, but they had kittens, and I was like, well, hell, you know, there's dogs running around, they might get to hold the kittens, the cat was protecting the kittens pretty well, so I brought the kittens in, and, you know, um, one of my siblings was helping me wash the kittens up, and then just petting them, and uh, basically, they're little bitty kittens, right, fed them, cleaned them, and uh, my abuser, my, you know, my mother, Lucy comes in and, you know, freaks the fuck out and says, you know, get those cute little kittens and put them outside. So let's just say Lucy and Kathy kittens. So she says to hell with those Lucy and Kathy kittens. And she made them go underneath the house. And then I couldn't find them the next day. They were gone. And then I saw one just lying on a concrete, like fucking beat up and roughed up and shit. Like somebody had found dogs who was picking on it, but it had already been beat up to where it was going to die instead of picking it up and burying it and doing something with it and trying to take care of it. Just kept walking over it. Dogs killed the Kathy and Lucy kitten. And in fact, why even give it to anybody else, right? So the Anne, the Anne and the Frank kitten, little Frank and little Anne. So little Ann and little Frank was made to go outside in a dangerous fucking world where there were dogs and they fucking ate them. And I I think the reason why my abuser did this is because they're dedicated to evil. Why are you evil? You want to manipulate people and tell people what to do. You want power over people. My abusers wanted power over me. And so instead of thinking, the, I would think it's the opposite. If you love me for 40 years... Then I should just give you my obedience. You've always had my back. You've always stood next to me. You, Anytime people are shitty to me, you always was like, hey, you know, don't you do that. 
So you had my back. You was, you know, you're you're relating to me. You're talking to me. You're articulating my thoughts. You care about, you know, my mind, body, and soul. You made my mind, body, and soul so goddamn strong. Then I should just obey you because God, you've been there my entire fucking life. If that's the kind of parent you've been, but you've been a manipulative fucking abuser. Well, shit. You'll say, send Ann outside. Let her get eaten up by dogs. Send Frank and Ann outside. Let Ann and Frank get eaten up by dogs. When I go to college, it was very important for my abusers to make sure I was homeless. <laughs> I'm only, you know, going to make something of myself. I got a fucking golden ticket out of this shithole. You know, not just this uh, oppressive fucking abusive atmosphere, but... Uh, Poverty. I get to maybe get into the middle class, maybe make something of my fucking self. But it was like, well, they abused me and scapegoated me and exploited me and my labor the whole time. They needed to know that uh, they're going to continue to enslave and torture and abuse me. And it's crazy because my abuser, the reason why Lucy said she had kids was she loved herself so much. She wanted to produce as many of herself as possible. So what's the formula here? She doesn't know about Piaget or Vygotsky or Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Have a little Lucy, enslave her, beat her, abuse her, torture her, talk down to her, humiliate her, never relate to her. And then what? What's the formula? I don't understand. You have another little Lucy. Let's say you have 10 more little Lucys. You enslave her, beat her up, torture her, abuse her for 40 fucking years. And then and then she was supposed to make something of herself after all that? I don't understand. The, there is no fucking formula. You're a selfish piece of shit and you're wicked motherfuckers. Why would you want to have power over it? so you could take all their wealth and resources, so you could take their, their wives, so you could take their children, so you could take everything away from them, their land, their farm, their property? Why are people wicked? There's lots of reasons to be wicked. Think about it. Come up with a philosophy of evil because if you're good, then wicked people will fuck you over for the rest of your life. They're wicked as shit. And instead of saying, oh, well, here's a nice person, we should make sure we protect the goodness Instead, they say, ah, oh, here's a person that's trustworthy. Here's a good one. This one's a sucker. This is a good person. We could fuck this one over. Huh. Because that doesn't make sense. It would seem to me, uh, you know, if you want to produce as many of yourself as possible, you would put them in the optimal environment. You would give them all the food, water, clothing, shelter, security. Not only did they try to make me homeless when I'm going to college, but I didn't have a, a table. I didn't have books growing up. I'm having to make straight fucking A's, do the fucking dishes, strip the fucking tobacco, house the tobacco, do all the setter fucking work, do all this fucking nonstop labor. I've done a lot of labor for you motherfuckers. And at the end of the fucking rainbow, at the end of the tunnel, there was no love. There was no fucking decency. Instead of saying, okay, for 40 years, we'll give you love, and then, you know, you should just obey us because we got your best interest in mind. Instead, they, they, they robbed me of my fucking, or they tried to take my mind, body, and soul before I even began. Thank God I was able to retain it. Thank God, I, but how many other motherfuckers are they, they, they doing that shit to? Basically, robbing the cradle. Stealing a baby, stealing a baby boy's dignity i mean to make a person to just want to enslave them if lucy is so great then why wouldn't you want lucy to be the best lucy that she could possibly be instead you didn't want another little lucy you wanted your kids to shut the fuck up and to obey you and do as you're told you didn't give a shit if they were like you or not you're making them stupid and weak and obedient there was this guy it was 10 years ago or something but, you know, I was supposed to pay him like five bucks or something. And I pulled out like a handful of cash. And he just went ahead and took the five dollars out of my hand. It was his. But, um, yeah, go ahead. What, which, which money did you want? Just go ahead and exploit me. Take whatever you want. All you got to do, I mean, as soon as somebody starts bitching out fucking orders, well, they're the ones in charge. Who cares? Let's ask a couple questions of these authoritarian motherfuckers. I want to talk about Barbara. But let's ask a couple questions. Okay, you piece of shit motherfucker. You're saying you're telling me to do this and you're telling me to do that so as to respect you. But when I need a goddamn, when I need a mother, when I need a parent, when I need a human being, an adult, when I need an adult, I don't get an adult that I could talk to, that I could relate to. I've done every fucking thing that you ever fucking asked. 
but there was no love. Instead of saying, God damn, he's done everything he's had. He loves the shit out of us. Of course we should have his back. Instead, it's, we've been abusing him for 40 fucking years, so we're going to keep on abusing him. He's our scapegoat. No, that's our redheaded stepchild. That's our black Jew. We're going to keep scapegoating the shit. He's going to go to college thinking that he's his own person, and then he's going to make it on his own. People are going to love him and respect him, give him the love and respect that we never could, and he's going to love it, and he's not going to come back to us. And then he's going to make it, and then we're going to have to, we'll just be stuck here by ourselves. So we got to fuck him over every which way we can. If we can't abuse and exploit his labor anymore, if we can't abuse and torture the shit out of that motherfucker anymore, then fuck him. And you know, people might say, well, you're 40 right now. Why are you still talking about this right now? Well, I still talk to one of my abusers or I was talking to her and I don't want her in my life anymore. So, and the way you motherfuckers, because it's a white woman, you motherfuckers, you can't wait. Every single one of you bastards have been quite okay with her being a piece of shit to me because all you guys are fucking hard up, apparently. That's all you give a fuck about. But I need a mother that gives a shit, that is respectful, and if you don't know Piaget and Vygotsky, you don't understand human development. You don't understand Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Not just barely understand it. Not just sort of memorize it here and there, but embed it in your soul, in the marrow of your bones. You don't know what humans need. You can't be a grandmother or a mother or anybody. You can't be a neighbor, really. You don't know what humans need. God damn. There's only five you know, main things. There's only five main things. Food, water, clothing, shelter, security, warmth, right? Food, water, the clothing is warmth. So that's that's it. Piaget and Vygotsky, well, there's two different ways to learn. You know, people could have knowledge that you don't have, so, you know, they could get you to where they're at. And then there's just interacting with people and socializing with people. That's another way to learn, too. But that's human development. You don't know what humans need, and you don't know how humans develop. How the fuck can you even think about being a mother or a father? To have a little, a little Lucy and then thinking enslaving, abusing, and torturing the shit out of Lucy is the proper way to, you know, make Lucy shine and make Lucy the best Lucy that she could be is fucking dumb and stupid and it's ugly. Instead of showering me with love and then for 40 years and then, you know, winning my obedience, they robbed the cradle and they stole my obedience without giving a shit about my mind, body, and soul. Without any fucking love. They were able to abuse and manipulate and so they're just going to keep on doing it. It's ugly. That's fucking ugly. So I have to deal with this shit now because she thinks she's going to come up to my fucking house when I have a wife and kid when I know exactly who she is. She's a piece of shit. She can't talk to me at all. She doesn't relate to me on any level whatsoever. I read that one book about how the, the mother and the kid is, you know, just, will you hold my hand? And she's got a story about when, you know, she's crossing the road and she's carrying my two siblings across the road. And uh, she doesn't want to hold my hand. No, you crawl, you're four years old. You cross the road. Her brother got killed by a car. You think she'd be a little bit more careful around vehicles and cars and traffic and shit. And then later on when I'm growing up, uh, the old man and the siblings, I'm, I get yelled at because one of my siblings crossed the road when it was dangerous. I got yelled at. I get fucked over either fucking which way. No, no, we're only going to love them. Oh, what? They fucked up? Well, that's your fault. Okay. You guys are some sick motherfuckers. You think abusing and enslaving and torturing people? No, here, here's what the problem was. You guys were poor, young, you didn't have enough space, and you didn't know what the fuck you were doing. And then all of a sudden, one of y'all started being abusive, and then now that's what the other one understood. But here's the thing about authoritarians, like that Kennewick, that uh, one book, is a teacher, World War I, Cantoric. The Cantoric, the teacher told the guys to go be soldiers. And then they were soldiers. And then they saw a bunch of death and bloodshed. And then Cantoric was drafted. So that authoritarian piece of shit was now a soldier right next to him. Okay, you authoritarian pile of shit. You, you thought you knew so fucking much. I've seen so much hardship and bloodshed and bullshit. Now you fight next to me. Let's see how good of a fucking soldier you are. And Cantoric was a bitch ass piece of shit. This motherfucker was just a bitch-ass piece of shit to start ordering other people around because he didn't want to be a fucking slave being ordered around no more. Any asshole that throws out fucking orders, you know what? If that was a problem, if I was like, God damn, this, you know, damn society is just, it's like herding cats and it's anarchy and it's 
We need somebody that's just, you know, ready to bark orders at every one of you bark orders. That's all you motherfuckers are. There's too many of you order barking motherfuckers. Y'all want power over others. No shit. What you don't want to do is give a shit. So many tiny little fucking things. Thank you to all the little things that people have done. You know, I mentioned Kathy earlier. Uh, she had made eggs for me. She sprinkled some pepper in my eggs. And that was nice. And I appreciate it. And maybe, you know, as I, I don't know, get older. What should she have done, right? But my, when I'm young as fuck, my mother, when I'm four or five, when I'm not, you know, crossing the road and I'm not a gra- goddamn g- college graduate running a household... Sorry, my mother's fucking Lucy. She never taught me to do any of this shit. She said, shut up, sit down. You ain't worth anything. When I'm four or five years old, Lucy's driving me up to Gallatin County in the middle of nowhere to up to Boone County. It's an hour-long drive. So she's driving on 42. She's flying. She's driving fucking 70 miles an hour. She hit a deer once. She spilled baked beans. She's going up there with dog shit fucking Charlie. So doing her chores. You have your own family to worry about, you ugly motherfucker. Why are you sitting there worrying about your brother? You're being a good sister for your brother and for your sister. But you're not being a good mother. You're putting my life on the line. You're putting me. It was a Nova, too. So those old muscle cars. Fuck, if she would, she hit that deer, if my little body would have flown up, hell, maybe it would have pierced the rearview mirror, would have, you know, pierced, gouged my eye out or some shit. Maybe it would have, you know, fucking... She didn't give a shit from the beginning. There was no Maslow's. I bet you they, as a happenstance, oh yeah, by the way, he probably needs food, water, and clothing. Ah, really, he just needs to get hit. Because we don't want to fucking deal with life is tough, life is hard. They had nobody. She's driving up to Kathy and Charlie's house. There is no, her mother's and father's dead. His fucking mother's a piece of shit married to stepdad. His father's in fucking Ohio and then North Carolina. So, uh, he's gone. And in fact, you know, if you want an evil motherfucker or some, maybe he was an abusive piece of shit, maybe being gone is the best fucking thing. Being, being gone is better than being an abuser. That's for goddamn sure. And, uh, Ralph is dead now. But Ralph Benton Deaton, my grandfather, fucking adored him. Probably one of the best family fucking members I've ever goddamn had. I wish he would have loved me and gave a shit and been around a little bit more. But he never did me no harm. In fact, he was pretty sweet and romantic and was comedic. It was just, I'm going through shit, so I need a place to stay. Oh, fuck, life got real. Guess we can't just make fucking jokes now. Yeah, yeah, I got, you know, I'm a human. I need a, a place to stay. When I'm going to college, not only did they not provide me a home, but they're telling my uncles and aunts not to provide me a home, my fucking grandmother. And let's get back to Barbara. It was all about Barbara. They stood next to her. So they, my, Lucy didn't care if I had shelter or security. But she would drive me up to Barbara's house and Kathy's house and Charlie's house. They get houses. They get a nice secure house. They get to wake up and uh, have water and food and safety. They get to... My whole life they've had these things. My whole life they've had these things. I've never had a safe house. Between poverty and being abused as a fucking child. You got criminal motherfuckers every which way. It's just me. So when I go to get a job and go out for eight fucking hours. To let you fucking thieving ass motherfuckers take my shit. No. No I know who you people are. Because I was abused. I know how my Aunt Kathy comes to my house. You know I'm living at Timmy's house. She comes over or Timmy's farm. And it's our own trailer, right? So mom, pop, uh, siblings. She came into my fucking house. And she's sitting there talking to me. And I think she's trying to, like, give me a hug or some shit. And I, you know, kind of pulled away from her. And she grabbed a hold of my arm. And she twisted my arm. And it fucking hurt. And she goes, you know, I was like, God, that hurt. And she said, I'm sorry. And I said, sorry doesn't help. Then she runs outside crying. Kevin and Lucy comes back. And they say, fuck you. Fuck your life. Apologize to her. No, you're nobody. You're a bitch-ass nobody. We had you not to fucking goddamn give you space and so you could be the best Lucy you could be. We had you so you could shut the fuck up and make us feel big and powerful. One is, you know, the, the old man. I basically forgive the old man because I know how ugly Lucy is. Lucy's an ugly motherfucker. And, you know, uh, part of me, I wonder if he would have done any of those things if she wasn't approving every bit of it, you know, every bit, step of the fucking way. She approved of it. She was jealous of it. She wanted that power. And then when I, 
I had younger siblings, instead of saying, God, we abuse the fuck out of this one, we should stop our abusive ways. Instead, they said, no, we need to be meaner. We need to be have an emotional attachment. So that gives us another way to control. She was abusive. She hit my younger siblings. I left that household and not thinking I would go back. Don't hit my younger siblings. She didn't give a fuck. She didn't give a fuck when I was a kid. And then when you motherfuckers meet her, so the problem is now when she comes up to my house and say, hey, you know, I'm the, I'm the grandmother, so I get to... No, no, you ugly piece of shit. You don't get to be in my life anymore. You're an ugly pile of shit. I do have a stalker, but I should thank that stalker because it, that stalker showed me how ugly Lucy is. She won't be my friend. She's never been my fucking friend. For 40 years, she's been a fucking prick. A violent piece of shit prick. Whenever they would tell me what to do, immediately, right, you know, I would do the thing. And if it was a correction, right, no elbows on the table, you know, basically whenever I would look at them, they didn't like that I existed. He's an insecure, you know, pile of shit. She went along with it because she is too. I'm a straight A student, altar boy, fucking boy scout. You couldn't get no more perfect than me. For 17 fucking years, but it wasn't good enough. Perfection was not good enough for Kathy and Lucy and Rosie and Barbara. When I think about Lucy, it's like, God, did Barbara make Lucy evil or has Lucy always been an evil piece of shit? Did she ever have a conscience? God damn, I mean, uh, thousands of fucking times just watching her youngest little baby boy get fucking hit and don't say nothing, don't say shit, just a dumb fucking piece of shit just stands there and watch like a dumb motherfucker. And then when you have siblings, she does it to them. You didn't even feel bad, did you? You probably fucking loved it because that's another thing. Instead of talking to me and interacting with me, it's obey, do this, do that. There's the green beans thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, they had kids, right? There's five kids. They're, they're producing like rabbits. So I guess Lucy saw a little bitty boy getting hit and that turned her on. She couldn't wait to get some dick. This is all about sex. That's all she's ever given shit about. She's a greedy, selfish piece of shit. She wants sex. She loves watching people hit other people. And then she says the Confederacy is right. She's racist. I know that Barbara Couts Deaton Williams is racist and Lucy and Barbara was fucking two peas in a pot. Lucy can't talk to me like, you know, like an adult. She can't talk to me like a mature adult who gives a damn about her kid. She can't do it. It goes against every fucking thing about her. I asked her to memorize 10 words. She couldn't do it. And it was a little, it was the smallest. I'm drowning. I'm drowning. Can you at least let me know that you're still thinking of me? Couldn't even learn 10 words. And, and you know, like I said, there's a fucking stalker. She wants to make a bunch of fucking reasons about why she doesn't want to give a fuck. Because she's an ugly motherfucker. She's always been an ugly motherfucker. She let me get hit because she's not getting hit. And she's letting me get hit because Camillus and Kevin were shitty to him. To her. Which, that makes a lot of sense, right? Kathy and Lucy, so uh, she had a, you know, and actually, I don't even, like I said, I forgive him. She said it was okay for him to be evil. If she would have said no, he wouldn't have done it. But she's the one that says, oh, he went and crossed the road. He wouldn't eat my crap food. Oh, you won't eat her crap food? I'll make you eat your, and they would made me eat their crap dog shit. The green beans. Ask Lucy, why was it so important to shove green beans up her kids' asses? Why was it so mean to be such a dickhead motherfucker? Just a disrespectful piece of shit. Just an ugly motherfucking... Every day, is like she couldn't... She would think about maybe giving a shit, like giving me an iota of respect, or maybe talking to me a little bit here and there. But she's a piece of shit. She's spying for... She's a daddy dick sucker. Camille's was shitty to Lucy, so Lucy's gonna be shitty to little Johnny. What did little Johnny do? He respected Lucy and loved Lucy, and he would never tell Lucy and, you know, abuse Lucy the way she got abused, but she doesn't give a shit. She's an ugly motherfucker. Her dad told her that's the way it's supposed to be, so she's going to do that fucking dumb shit to me. Instead of standing up to her shit fucking father, she's also going to drive me to Barbara's house. Barbara abused me. Hey, Lucy, Barbara abused me when I was five years old, and she shrugs her shoulder. She don't give a shit. Yeah, if you would have told me, I wouldn't have done anything then. Yeah, so you're not a fucking mother. You should never have had kids. You drove me to a person's house every fucking year, and she abused the shit out of me. And like you said, it wouldn't have fucking mattered. Yeah, it didn't matter what she was doing, where or what. She needs to keep her fucking hands to herself, but you didn't give a shit about that. 
she identifies with Barbara Williams. And it, yeah, I am fucking jealous. I wish she could love me. I was her own fucking kid, her own flesh and blood, and she, let, she loves Barbara more than me. Barbara had her own house. Barbara had her own man. She had all her Maslow's hierarchy of needs. She was completely developed. And now I'm supposed to, what, think that her abusing me? Hey, Barbara, you know why I didn't talk to you every time I went to your house? Because you abused the shit out of me. And you're ugly. And you're a piece of shit. And I don't like people who abuse me. But why does... Barbara would wor work with Lucy for 20 years. Barbara and Lucy were two peas in the pod. They're her best fucking friends. She didn't look down upon Barbara's child abuse. She didn't look down upon Barbara's racism. I remember Barbara laughing about Bob, the stepfather's making a fucking joke about monkeys. Uh, black people look like monkeys to him when they dunk, you know, on a basketball. And she was laughing so hysterically. She takes me to Value City. She didn't even buy me nothing. I don't even know what the fuck. Why are you taking me to stores, motherfucker? So we go to Value City. And there's a, a black woman in front, and I don't know what happened. She had to, you know, I don't know, turn something in or turn it back in or something. I don't know. But she just started fucking calling her the N-word over and over again, saying, like, see how these people are? And just N-word, 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 N-word. This is me at seven. It was very important for Lucy to make sure I was around a child abusing, fucking racist pile of shit that doesn't love anybody. Barbara told Lucy when she was pregnant with one of my siblings, you know, she tried to knock her off the setter. And said, if you fell off, then maybe you'll get an abortion. Because she didn't like Lucy. And she didn't love her kids. And Lucy's been voting about abortion her whole fucking life. But when it came to uh, somebody talking about aborting her kid, she didn't say a fucking word. In fact, the reason why she votes Republican is to make sure Barbara likes her. She wants Barbara Counts Deaton Williams to like her so fucking much that she won't even uh, stand up for her own daughter when she was sitting there talking about aborting her own daughter. But she'll be an asshole. She'll be a fucking dickhead about abortion. She'll make all these other girls out here in the world give their, you know, have their daddy's fucking kid. But when she had an opportunity to speak up against abortion, for you would think the most important thing for a pro-life person would be their own fucking kid. Nope. Not at all. They didn't give a shit about it, that at all. It was about control, manipulation. Lucy thinks the Confederacy won. Well, I mean, God, when she went to Boone County, the Confederate flag is right there on the fucking ground. Every motherfucker she's ever talked to has always been a racist piece of shit, pro-child abuse. Nobody's ever telling her that she needs to do better when she's being a dick to me. So many fucking motherfuckers. Anytime me and her talk to somebody, you motherfuckers will be a dick to me. She'll be a dick to me. You'll be a dick to me. And you guys are totally fine with it. It's fucking bullshit. You guys are ugly motherfuckers. You guys are some ugly motherfuckers. She's a grown-ass woman. She's been able to... She's had a house. She's had all of her Maslow's hierarchy of needs. She's had her security her whole life. And she, Barbara had security. All her Maslow's hierarchy of needs met her whole life. Her, every woman and every person that is around Lucy, Barbara, Kathy, Charlie, they had all their Maslow's hierarchy of fucking needs. You ever worked for a year and had someone take your entire year's worth of wages away from you? That's Lucy. Lucy stole a year's worth of wages from me. Lucy likes to pick fucking fights. She's not talking with me because she wants to talk over me and manipulate me and then get somebody to hit me. That was, that was Lucy's favorite little game. Lucy loved doing that, just being an ugly fucking bitch and being an argumentative motherfucker. And then I'm getting dragged through the fucking linoleum. I'm getting dragged through the vinyl in goddamn Florida. Lucy loved it. God damn, it was like she was going to keep on arguing until either I agreed with her or until I got beat up. That's what she fucking wanted. She didn't want to talk to me. She didn't want to relate to me. She didn't want to educate me, talk, tell me about the world, how she sees the world. I remember I was pretty broken up as a youngster when she's sitting there reading the little Bible stories to my siblings. But the point is, she didn't care about my mind. She cared about their mind. She cared about who they were. She cared about what they thought and where they were going in life. She didn't give a fuck about me. I don't know, was she always evil? Maybe, maybe not. Because, I mean, why am I thinking about this five-year-old shit when she comes around my fucking house? I know she's a child abuser and she's a piece of shit. I don't want her ugly fucking face around my fucking kids. My family is going to g grow up in an abuse-free household. She don't know shit about that. She's always been an ugly, dumb motherfucking piece of shit and she's ugly and mean and ugly. And I don't want her... I have a right to be free from violence and oppression and these motherfuckers exploited me. They enslaved me. They tortured me. They, and she can't talk to me. If she could talk to me right today. But basically when I talk to her. Basically it sounds like. I fucked you over for 40 years. And I'm going to keep on fucking you over. 
That's who Lucy is. Lucy talked to Alice. Alice is Jewish. But Lucy says, Hitler's a smart man. Lucy says, don't Jew me over. Lucy's an anti-Semite. She respects Barbara Williams because she's a racist. She thinks the Confederacy fucking won. I mean, Barbara was a racist piece of shit. And you guys respect these fucking evil Amber Heard racist motherfuckers. I got, you know, people get hammering me over there. Are you racist? Are you racist? Do you hate gay people? Do you hate gay people? No, motherfucker. I'm one of the most progressive people in the fucking world. Now, are you happy? Are you happy you met an anti-racist, a person who's not a homophobic piece of shit? I'm not a bigoted, discriminatory piece of shit. Are you happy about it? No, no, because those piles of shit just want a fucking reason to hurt me. You met a racist piece of shit. You met a child abusing piece of shit. You met an anti-Semite, you Nazi fuck. But it was more important to be white supremacists. White women, Lucy cares about white nationalism. Being a white woman is the most important thing in the world. Why does she think the Confederacy won when the grip surfers got here in 1869? She's a dumb pile of shit. She would rather jump into a racist fucking uh, cesspool instead of being a knowledgeable person who knows her family, knows where the grip surfers came from, knows where she came from. She's pissing on her mother and father's heritage because she don't give a shit. She's a white supremacist pile of shit. Child abusing, white supremacist, ugly motherfucker. If I was to, okay, I'm going to have a kid and then enslave them. You're telling me, I mean, she's a grown ass woman, but if I shoved uh, green beans up Kathy's ass, do you think that's acceptable, America? Hey, America. No, no, Kathy back talked to me, so I smacked the shit out of her. And then I kept smacking her until she started making my fucking dinner right. She don't know how to make my dinner right. She still makes fucking meals for these abusive motherfuckers. She only sprinkled pepper in my eggs one time. I wish I had an aunt that loved me. I wish I had a mother who loved me. I read that book about the mother and said, will you hold my hand? Everywhere they went. They went on adventures here and there and everywhere. I asked my mother to be a mother and she acted like there was some fucking perverted fucking thing that's attached to it. No, Hector Projector, you're the sick, evil motherfucker. Why did you let Kathy twist my arm? Why did you make me apologize to the person that physically abused me? Because you're an evil, sick motherfucker. Why were you driving me to her fucking house and Charlie's house, not giving a shit about my safety? Baked beans fucking following me. You ran into a deer. You're risking my life. And you're also not talking to me. You're making sure Kathy and Charlie's not talking to me or they're making sure you're not talking to me. They weren't there for you. You had nobody fucking helping you out when you was establishing your fucking household except for who? Your husband and your children. They were there giving you income, giving you emotional support, being a witness for you. You could go to work and come back and you knew everything was going to be right then and there. Nobody was stalking you. Nobody's going to fucking take your stuff. You could keep every bit that you earn, Lucy. Even if you're only making $8 an hour at Save-A-Lot, you would keep every dime. You work 40 hours, that's 300 bucks you get to take home. But if you work for Lucy, you work for an entire year, she would take your entire wages away. She didn't feel bad because fuck you, fuck your life. She's there to exploit you, enslave you, abuse you, and torture you. It ain't no thing. It, what, to fuck a tobacco labor? To steal, you know how hard tobacco labor is, but she stole it like it wasn't shit. He stole it, but she she's always been okay with evil. She's always gone along with fucking wickedness. You don't have a conscience? You're going to fucking church? You're acting like you're a good fucking person? Oh, that's right. You're you're fake. You're a fake piece of shit. You don't, you're not good. Here's what I see, okay? Somebody's abusing my kid. Fuck you! Lucy, you want to, you want to, Kathy to twist my kid's arms? Fuck you! You want to drive my kids up to fucking Charlie's house? So, fuck you. You want to shove green beans? 